talking today with John B. Hey, hello, hello. Okay, so we're just going to get straight into it. Where have you been? Where have I been? Yeah, man. Um, I've been out there doing my thing, man, you know, all around the world doing my thing. But at the same time, I'm working on the seventh album. Um, some of y'all don't know about the sixth that I had out in the States because I haven't released it yet in, 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 in Europe. But um, we're working on getting that out as soon as possible. The album's called Helpless Romantic. You know what I mean? From yours truly, you know how I do. You know how I get down already, you know what I mean? So it's just it's good love mu making music, baby making music. I mean, you know, it's just I'm just trying to really um, keep it consistent. I don't feel like I have to hit a hit an album or have a hit every single year, you know what I mean? I feel like it's nice to take a, a minute away, kind of watch things happen. And at the same time, I'm, I'm writing during that whole process, you know what I mean? During that whole time, it's, it's, that's when the writing really goes down. And um, I'm blessed to say on this new album, I'm working with DJ Quick, um, Battle Cat, you know, Timberland's on this album, got a bunch of different people I'm, I'm getting ready to work with now too, as far as duets, Faith Evans, and man, I'm looking forward to uh, a lot of the a lot of the younger kids now really embracing the music too. You know, I'm 35 this year, I've been doing it 15 years now, you know. Um, it just feels like real music will prevail, you know what I mean? So that's where I've been. <laughs> so you've been away for a little while. Um, you've obviously seen how the industry has changed. Um, what do you make of the what you've seen um, in the music game, how it's developed in the last yeah. 10 to 15 years? It's gotten really, really beat-driven, you know what I mean? It's always been R&B over the last 10 years. It's always been really beat-driven, but I think right now more than ever you hear that you know what I mean? It's little simple things, man. It just catches the ear right now. And I think really the youth is really into beats. And so that's why you, you, you hear so much of this new production coming up. It's coming from these kids in the street with the beatboxes, you know, or the, they get a little Fruity Loops on their, their program or whatever, or Logic or whatever. Get it cracking, man. Get it going, you know. So um, I think that's really encouraging to me, because knowing that there's just so much more accessibility of the music is accessible to us now, whereas back in the day, equipment cost so much. You know, that's why you only had so many people with studios, or, you know, equipment that couldn't really make music. It wasn't accessible back in the day. The internet has opened up the game as far as anyone can be an artist now, you know, and, and put your album out and get exposure. Um, anybody can put their, their video on YouTube. So it really is leveled the playing field for everyone. So I think that's the way the game has changed. But in terms of creatively, it just gets better with time, man. You know, but we gotta, we gotta really, we can't forget about the foundation of R&B, like the using of the, you know, the use of real instruments. You know, um, like I play keys, you know, and I'm, I play my chords, I pl play my bass lines, and I program my drums, or I play my drums. You know, it's not like I have somebody come in and do it for me. So I encourage a lot of people, a lot of artists, try to, try to make your beats, try to write your, your, your material. Um, the more of us that are out there, just the more that we can continue to just keep the foundation alive and the music doesn't get diluted at all. You know, because we'll go through our little phases in R&B where everybody just likes the real simple, hooky, you know, party music. And then someone like Maxwell will come along and change the game up, or Sade, you know what I mean? Or certain artists that just, Erica Badu, you know, just will really change the game. Everyone we know is going to listen to that record, you know, so kind of artists that you would say, modern day artists that you rate at the moment, who you think are uh, up there? I really respect um, anyone who's writing, producing their own material, so I have to put those people up in the forefront first. I mean, Alicia Keys always has been doing her thing. But I mean, like, to big up some of the newer artists that have come out, like Ryan Leslie is another oh, yeah. person in the game, you know what I mean? He's definitely keeping it fresh, keeping it new. The swagger is definitely grown and, and grown man singing to you, you know what I mean? It's it's not it's not boyish. I like that. Obviously, Michael Jackson passed not too long ago. How do you think that's impacted the music industry? I think the music industry now has the sense of how fragile life really can be, you know what I mean? I, in terms of, I think that we, our music, we've gotten really into the whole party aspect of it, you know? And, you know, I think it's important that we reflect 
through experiences like losing our the most the most loved the most cherished singer artist ever before to lose him is is a reality check in terms of you know our health in terms of like our our health because if we don't have inner health and physical health it starts with physical health you know what i mean and then with the physical you know and the spiritual all of that together you know what i mean i think that true a true message and a true magic can be made you know what i mean but without that it's kind of like the blind leading the blind i think mike had his time to lead us for all these years but at this point, I think that was when God kind of like made this decision. All right, you've done enough here. Now come come home. You know what I mean? You've done enough. So, I mean, I just look at it like that, man. I mean, if you can if you can be one one hundredth of what that man was, you know what I mean? Um, to use certain aspects of what he did, being such a, um, a philanthropist, you know what I mean? Someone who cared about the, the better good of the world. You know, and he didn't just write songs about, I want to get with you. It was like, I'm going to write a song about heal the world. I'm going to write a song about look at the man in the mirror. You know what I mean? And to think of think of it being back in the 80s, it doesn't matter. It's like we can still write records like that now. We can still go back to human nature. You know what I mean? And I, I can't help it. And, you know, records like um, uh, Rock With You, I actually um, – just redid a Michael Jackson song, and I plan to actually return to the the music scene um, with that as like my new my little just homage, paying homage, paying tribute to my man, you know, um, because it just it just will never be the same. It will never be the same. But I will actually never be the same too, because every time you see me on stage now, you're looking at Mike, okay? Because I am the spirit of Mike. Mike is living right in here, yo, straight up. You want to know where Mike is? That's where he's at, baby. So tell us a bit about your new material. Can you introduce me to that? Yeah, this is, this is, it's, I really, really love where I'm at. I just had a two-year-old. Well, I didn't just have her because she's two years old. <laughs> so, but she's new to the world, man. She's new to my world, and she's welcomed me to a whole new world through her, you know, her joy. And just, just what it is to raise a child is just a brand new thing for me, you know. So I think. You know, if I can be confident first in that and, and, and know that I'm doing my best with that, all this is just this old hat, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's extra, and it's a lot. It's not that I, I've gotten jaded and I, I, pre I appreciate it any less. It's like I appreciate it so much more now because this is how I support my, my child. But at the same time, this is what she knows daddy's calling is. You know, this is what makes daddy happy because I can come home and be like that much better of a father. So, I mean, not to get away from your question, but really that kind of like sums up the whole thing. Being a father and all that is kind of like the morale and the vibe behind, the love behind the album. You know, I'm married, um, my wife and I, we try to live a, a life that's kind of secluded from the world somewhat. We're not a celebrity couple. We, you don't see us out on the red carpets telling everybody we're a couple. You know, it's not like that. We're, we're um we're much more of a romantic type of a situation where it's like, you know, we like to go places and have a nice fly dinner with where the walls look a certain way, you know what I mean? Or there might be some fly trees or by the ocean or mountains or something, you know what I mean? Aesthetics is very important to me. Being an artist, um, it's all about what you surround yourself with and what type of environment you hang out with. Because if you if you just hang out in the same places all the time, blah, 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 then what does that really do for your creativity, you know? So traveling and all that, getting out, um, talking, having conversation with my wife is really, is really what my motto is of life. So that's why I named my album Helpless Romantic because I just can't help but be the way that I am. You know, it's I love, I love my my life, man. You know, and I think other people, when they hear this album, it's gonna generate that feeling for them. You know, it's immediately it's like. It's it's like it's just a good feeling record, man. So, <laughs> I mean, I kind of pause there. I'm like, it's like, <laughs> it <sounds laughs> I just gotta go get it though, for real. <laughs> Excuse me, love. Can I come dance with you? Uh.